You guys, <laughs> Sam's here. Hi. I'm so excited. I'm excited too. I'm Let's tell people what here. happened when you walked in. You walked in. Your hair is flawless. I got insecure. I just asked you went if to I the bathroom. Brush it. it like she it asked was... you, no, 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 no. <laughs> she came in. She goes rat's nest. Even though every strand is literally perfect. Every time I walk out the door of my apartment, there there could be no wind. I could be in a vacuum, <laughs> and there's like a knot at the back of my neck that I need to get rid but of. But it looks perfect. Thank you. But it, your hair looks perfect. So, but I got insecure. I put it up, and then you came back. You're like, you're so fake. You're fake. Out. And <laughs> your I loved hair looks it. Amazing. I love it for us. <laughs> anyway, so she made me. I did, and it looks great. And I also think it up the top nicely. And also, I think that it's an interesting fact that you get your hair done in Jersey by a hundred year old. I sure do. Because um, people are going to ask. I mean, don't people, people ask, ask you on Instagram? Yeah. Yes. And I actually gatekeep. I'm not much of a gatekeeper. Like, I know. I love You're not trying thing. to have them go to your a hundred year old. And like. They're kind of my family. Mm. They've been with my family since my grandmother's wedding day in 1952. Like my original hairdresser at this salon did my grandmother's hair in her kitchen on her wedding day in 52. So these people are like my grandparents, essentially. They know everything about me, everything about my family. It's just like too close to home. It's like, I don't really want- So you don't like tag my, them? N- well, they're not really like a social <laughs> media salon. Like so they're not you on pay, Instagram. you pay? Yes, I pay. But- Can I ask of, how much it costs in Jersey by 80 something year olds? Um, Between myself and my mom. Yeah. It's only like 500 or so. Like both of you together. Both of us. For highlights, I get a cut. That's cheap. A glaze. That's cheap for- Anywhere. It's cheap for anywhere. Really. Do you always go with your mom? Almost always That's so because cute. she goes more frequently than I do. So yeah. when I'm like, hey, I'm going to come back home to like get my hair done. She's like, cool, I'll come too. I know because it's and such a process out. too. It's I'm- a six to seven hour experience sometimes. Oh my God. Yes. I mean, yeah, they're older, so it's slower. <laughs> no, I'm not k- kidding because I'm such an impatient person. Mm-hmm. Like getting my hair done, getting a manicure, all those things. I know it sounds funny, but it's like a chore to me. No, manicure, I'm on the same page as you. I can't sit in that it, Like two sitting hours. it and then it's like my feet are dying and they're like pedicure. I'm like, no, I just can't take another I don't, hour and a half. I don't do- get pedicures for that exact reason. I cannot sit in the chair. Right. I literally can't do it. And also, I feel like if you can't paint your own toenails, <laughs> there's a deeper issue you, no, you need to like explore. The scrub, <laughs> yeah, the whole no, thing. totally. Get a massage. Yeah. I don't know. But I actually love that they take their time on my hair because it's such a focal point for me. Like, I know you're have, saying you, you were saying that. You're like, it's like, I don't like, have a lip, I don't have like a crazy cheekbone. I'm like, give me the hair and the eyelashes. That's what you I have. You do eyelashes. Mm. You do like what extensions? No, no. I just wear mascara, but I just take really. Wait, those are your eyelash? No, they're not, Sam. I'm like, zoom in. <laughs> Get over here. Those are really your. No, yes. they're not. I'll tell you my whole routine. I will link it on the internet. I won't gatekeep that because that's Wait, not my Wait, that family. is not extensions mm-hmm. and not anything. Those are yours. And I, it's, okay, here's how it started. But you did wake up one day in like Winter House and have extensions or something. There was something that so crusty and disgusting. Yeah. No, I'll tell Those you for yours. Story. That's a different. I need some that screen grab of the way I look that morning. Corey's like in bed next to me, like telling me all this mean stuff girls said about me. And I'm just, I'm like, and those I were your eyelashes too. Yes. Okay. I'll explain everything. Essentially, here's we talk where about really deep and important things on this podcast. Okay. Like eyelashes. I I think this is <laughs> deep and important. This is. Everyone, I've never had so many questions about anything. Okay, so let's get into it. As my eyelashes. So I'll talk about it. I was a ballerina growing up. As a ballerina, you have to wear falsies all the time. One, that gets you accustomed to having like big, dark, dramatic lashes. And then you hate your face when you take them off. You're like, I don't look like a Barbie doll anymore. Goodbye. Number two is that when you're young and you like don't know and don't care, at the end of a show, you will rip them off. Like no cleanser, no nothing. You're just like, take this shit off and throw them. And you rip out your real eyelashes. So then you don't have real eyelashes. Like you're like, they're like messed up, right? Uh Like you're missing some and they look weird. They're all different lengths, whatever. As an adult, I was just like, I need to repair this thing that I've done. This has happened to me with so many beauty things. So I got a serum. Um, I started out using Rodan and Fields, but I found one. like an MLM. Like, probably. I don't know. My girl was like, <laughs> she be like, no, I think she did. Okay. Her name was Erica. She was a doll. Okay. Um, so you use a serum that so works. I used that for a while. Then a friend of mine was like, why do you spend $150 on that? You can get like a $20, like random off brand one on Amazon. That's so good. 
got it, started using it. It changed my life. It's literally a $20 serum. It's clean. No side effects. Doesn't bother my eyes. Never an irritation. Like nothing weird. My eyelashes are so thick and so long. And I'm obsessed with it. I push it onto everyone I know. So I'll, I'll post a link to that because people will ask. And then the second thing I do that I swear by is tubing mascara. What's that? It, it goes on like regular mascara. It comes in a wand. My favorite is the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions. You Thrive is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, so what's tubing? So, okay, so you put it on, and I'm wearing it right now. It looks like regular mascara. feels like regular mascara. When you go to take it off, instead of like using makeup remover or scrubbing or anything, if you get it wet, you can like r- go like this on your eyelashes, and it like rolls off, and it comes off in like little – it like pills, like a sweater. Uh, so that's what was all over – because I was crying the uh, night before. It was all the pilling – but it, I didn't take off my makeup because I was wasted and upset. So the pilling was like on my eyelashes still from the water of my tears. I feel like it like so that's that becomes a long thing for you because you have such long eyelashes. Other yes, people they're just like, be like one pill. They're like dang, two pills, like, three pills. But yours this is like serum. <laughs> this serum will get you there. Wow. Life changing. Wow. And I don't okay. even know the name of the brand. Okay. Anyway, you guys, that was our beauty section yeah. with <laughs> we Sam. Have a magazine. I know. Excuse me. We're spilling the tea. Um, okay, let's go to the fucking very beginning right. of everything. Ooh. First of all, even before you came on Summer House, you were like creating content, you were like an influencer. Mm-hmm. But before that, you were also in the in the space. Yes. I've always been in media. Okay. Um I started creating content early, like I would say 2015. I um, posted a discount code. That was before people knew what that meant. It was before the term influencer really was ubiquitous. Um, And the only real influencers were like Danielle Bernstein and Mm. Ami Song. And like that was it. Um, I got made fun of a lot. And I was like, I just see an opportunity here. I just see a way to make money, to share things with people, which I'm already doing. So like, why not make a little commission or something? And that was kind of my first like, like, fuck you to the man. I was like, fine, laugh at me. Like, I'm going to laugh all the way to the bank with my $10 of commission. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. It was like 2015. Wait, 2015, you're 26 now. Yeah. So 2015, I was like you 17, were- 17, 18. Pre-college? Pre-college. But college is really when I started to consider myself like an influencer. Um, That was back in the golden days of Instagram when every time I posted, I would gain like 300 followers Mm. just from posting. Mm. No hashtags, no nothing. It was just, I was giving Pinterest vibes, outfit inspo, hair inspo, face inspo, like, like fitness inspo. Everything was hashtag inspo. Yeah. And you would just grow and grow and grow. And back then also was like a big time of like total frat move would repost like hot college girls on Instagram and like you'd gain a bunch of followers. It was like the weirdest like So you got like reposted a little bit. Yeah. And that's really when brands started sending me clothes and jewelry and makeup and they were like, sell this, do that. And that's when I started really earning money. And then after school, I wanted to work in journalism. My dream job was to work as a, like an entry level assistant at Cosmo. I was like, I'm and you got it. I, yeah. How'd you get it? <laughs> I'm I'm an eldest daughter type A control freak reservations making trip planning. Okay. Girl. And when I was 20, I would say in college. I looked at my credits and I looked at the requirements and I was like, I'm going to graduate early. And my parents were like, why? Why would you leave college, this magical safety net place, like where you can do whatever you want? Why? And I was like, because what if that job becomes available? And they were like, right, what if like the moon falls down like through gravity (laughs) and space and time? And what if pigs fly? And what if Zac Efron calls you on the phone and is like, let's get married? (laughs) And I was like, great, totally. But <laughs> there's one job. There's one opening for that job if if it were ever to open. And if it opened and I was here like taking a one credit class and paying rent on this like broken down house in bumfuck North Carolina, when that oh, job opened, I would kill myself. And they were like, okay, <laughs> it's 
little intense, but do you like yeah. whatever makes you happy? And I don't know how the stars aligned, but they did. And the job became available two weeks before I graduated early. And how early did you graduate? Like a semester? One semester. And the job went up. Wait, I had, were you checking Cosmo's website every day? Like, what was your process? Pretty much. Like, pretty much every time it was like internship applying season, like, and you job applied applying at those season. times? No. Um, Cosmo has, Hearst Magazines has a really interesting internship policy. They only accept interns from a couple of schools. It's based on like the school's legal stuff. So it's really weird. Um, so I never had the opportunity to intern there because they didn't accept interns from mm. the school. But I, I just had spent my whole life. I studied for it in college. I, all my internships were media and journalism focused. I, um, I like found my way into an informational interview during, I guess during college also in the Cosmo offices because I like met someone on a ski trip in Lake Tahoe who was friends with someone who worked at Cosmo. It was like the biggest force in the world, but I got my feet through that door and that's all I cared about. So I just like knew my whole life that's where I wanted to be and that's what I wanted to do. So when the opportunity arose, I I literally had been preparing for my whole life. Like I was just ready. I sent in the best cover letter. I I used to coach young women, like do career coaching a little bit because I was young so women, overly like you're prepared. a young woman. Right, I was 21, yeah. right? But, <laughs> you're like but people got jobs with my advice and I helped them build their resumes and write their cover letters because I knew the formula. I had spent my whole life kind of creating that formula and like tweaking it. Like you were a it. good student and stuff too? Yeah. Yeah. So I just, so I the wrote- the job opens up, you write this crazy cover letter. I, yep. And I just aced the edit test. I had spent, I was so familiar with Cosmo's brand that I actually, they asked me to like write a listicle and I designed it using graphic design references from the magazine. I like found the fonts. I like, I really, really, oh I like made God. them a little mini magazine basically for my edit test. And they called me on the phone. I remember it clear as day. I was wearing mismatched socks and like the ugliest PJs, whatever. And my ex-boyfriend was like laying in my bed and my phone starts ringing and it's a number from New York. And I looked at him and I was like, I think I, I just got the job. And I stood up and like started pacing and I answered the phone and they were like, hi, you probably know why we're calling. And I was like, I don't. Could you say it? And they were like, sure, you have the job. And I just like, it was so and hard was not a to job, cry. job, not an internship. Yeah. Like straight out of college. Yes. And the start date was for like one week after I graduated early. I'm serious. I think manifestation is for I mean, real. no, it, it is. It is. Yeah. But you're not, this isn't a woo-woo thing. Like manifesting means also you were putting everything into it. Yes. You were obsessed with this goal. You had this goal. You were working towards it. You were doing everything. And then, and you then know, you need just aligned. a little bit of the the stars. A little bit of like- A little bit of fairy like, dust. Right. A little bit of stardust. But so how'd you get an true. apartment quick and like- what um, you do? My parents luckily live in New Jersey. That's where I'm from. Oh, right. So I commuted for my first six months until all my friends graduated. And then um, I just had a couple of friends who wanted to move to New York after college. We did it. And I, people, it's so funny. A lot of people on the internet think I grew up with like bajillionaire media mogul parents. Yeah. They're like that's how she got her job. That's how she got her apartment. Yeah. That's how she got all these things. And my parents do really well for themselves and are super ambitious. And it's a source, they are such a source of pride for me. But when they offered to help me with my first apartment, I said no. And I shared a bedroom in my first New York City apartment. And I fucking, I did all of the work and I made all my own money. And like, I look back on that time and I used to be like so embarrassed that I shared a bedroom because mm -hmm. I was like, okay, like that's so weird. Like I could never bring a guy here. Um, but I now look back and I'm so proud because I can really always say like this career is mine and I made it yeah. and it was me. Um, and I will never take for granted the privilege that it requires to like go to college and have, you know, the opportunity to commute from my house, my parents' house in New Jersey into my city. Internship. Why do you think you were giving, why do you think you give that off? Like that people just want to assume that you come from a lot of money and that your parents paid your way. And I think people feel like there are things they can't 
achieve mm. or and they don't want to believe that you did. Right. And it's not because they can't achieve those things. They think they can't. So they project. They're like, okay, she could never have achieved that. Like right. she's pretty and blonde, so she's probably stupid. Or but this is right. always the thing. And you've probably experienced it yeah. too. If you're pretty and I mean, I say blonde too, but like yeah, I feel like it, I, experience, no, I feel like it layers. <laughs> but like people have to assume that there's something else that's bad about you to make it all better. They have to assume you're stupid or they have to assume you're mean or they have to assume you're a slut. Like those are that's like the double-edged sword of like people thinking you're cute is that you have to be something else that's worse that discounts the cute. I that love that though. Let's talk about how you got into reality TV because you were and are part of reality TV. Mm-hmm. You joined Summer House season seven. And I love this, you guys. When they bring new people, they always say they're coming with somebody. Right. You came in as Amanda's friend. Yes. Are Were you at that time Amanda's friend? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, more of an acquaintance. Like we were not like texting every day calling. Yeah, yeah, But yes, we knew each other a little bit. Um, and I felt like she was a really safe person. How'd you know each other with. from? Just like being in the media world. Like, a, uh, uh-huh. you know, like girlies who work in creative kind of uh, like run in Oh, right. Because she's also like a graphic designer. Yeah. And... She was at Lossy 10 for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and then right before the kind of final lock it in, you're on the show was made. We grabbed lunch to talk about it. And I had some questions and she was kind of like, I think you're just a good fit. Like, let's see how it goes. And I'm a yes girl. Like, I'm never going to say no to like this weird, crazy thing that like may or may not ever come my way again. Did it ever the, were you ever attracted though to fame in that way? Like being on TV, being in entertainment, like your face being out there? Yes. More in, um, more in the way of like hosting mm-hmm. and not so much. TV, TV, yeah, yeah, yeah. but more like e news type of stuff. But you or didn't like think whatever. reality TV. I didn't. A couple months before Summer House reached out to me, The Bachelor reached out to me. Oh. Um, that's when it kind of started the wheels turning of like maybe this could be cool and Wait, fun. Wait, The Bachelor reached out. Did you go through with the process? Um, I did. I was like two days before my flight when we decided it was a no go because. Who's we? Um, myself and casting, there was some kind of big question mark about who The Bachelor was going to be. What were, what were the options? They don't tell you until the very end. And then that was when they told me that it was going to be this Clayton guy that he had not been aired yet from his previous season. So we didn't know anything about him. It was kind of just a complete shot in the dark. But they gave me like a little like I knew like a little bio of him basically. And I, I was kind of like, no, I don't know. Wait, and I'm then they were, you were supposed to go on Clayton season. And then they were like, honestly, we don't think you guys would be a great. What? Player. Like casting of bachelor said that to you. They interview you for so many hours. But it's interesting I don't know if I'm that, allowed to say this. No, I, but I, they, I don't, I don't think I have a problem. No, I, I've had bachelor people. They tell yeah. me like the whole thing. Yeah. And I'm friends with a lot of them. We did a, we did some work together at Cosmo, me and the bachelor cast pilot Pete season. Oh, you, what you were working there then? I worked at Cosmo and we shot an episode of The Bachelor during Pilot Pete season in Costa Rica, myself and my editor in chief. Stop. One of the challenges was like modeling under a waterfall for um the for the issue of Cosmo. And I did like a I wrote the 10 page spread interview of That's of crazy. Pilot Pete. Yeah. Would you date Pilot Pete? I think he's too nice for me. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, babe. There. I he was fucked on We Met at Acme Mel with him. He, 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 you did what? I did the We Met at Acme live show. Oh, you did a show with him? At the Gramercy Theater with him. I mean, he is nice, but I feel like he's one of those guys where like something else is going on too. It's not yeah, like all is. you see. He's really funny. I mean, didn't funny? he change I don't know if he's like three different that? girls too? Like he picked. I don't the, remember it all that much. Yeah, he, he picked. Who did he end up with? Well, nobody because they all. Wait, he picked, I remember Hannah. He picked Hannah. That's how I met Hannah. And then he switched to Maddie. He switched to Maddie. What else? She's like super Christian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bible girl. Um, then. Oh, yeah. Virginity. Got right. It. She's beautiful. And yeah. then he ended up with the lawyer. Yes. And then she. They had a breakup. The, that was a terrible breakup. I remember it. And then there was also Hannah and the windmill fight. Anyway, and something's now, going on there. And now I don't know. Yeah. Well, so I went on the show with him at We Met at Acme. Yeah. 
We had a great time. I love Lindsay. Um, and I was there with Corey and Pete was the third guest. And we had a really good time. He's hilarious. He takes a joke like nobody else. Yeah. Like we we were all like roasting each other. We had a great time. Um, I don't know. I mean, listen, That's I'm crazy. not saying no to anything yeah. or any like anything right now because I'm just kind of, you know. Okay, let's get into it right now. Well, we're going to get into Summer House. You get to Summer House season seven. You were a newbie. That's, I mean, yeah. uh, you had another newbie. Gabby was yes, with you. Yes, Gabby. So you weren't, and she's a good friend still. Yes, she yeah. She seems like such a good friend. She's a great friend. I love her. Girl's girl. It seemed like Lindsay was really accepting of you both. Yeah. The other girls at that point. I had a great relationship with all of them from the beginning. Mm -hmm. They don't obviously show everything on the show because we only have so many minutes. Yeah. Um, and I find that what they tend to show supports like the larger storyline. Right. So. so it's not like they're hiding things. They're not like, oh, like, let's make it look like Sam and Paige never spoke a word to each other. Yeah. It's more just like as the show goes on, you see like myself, Gabby, Danielle, well, at the time, myself and Gabby really rally around Lindsay. Mm. So they were like showing more of our friendship as opposed to like cutting out like my friendship with the other girls. Yeah. It was just we're going to emphasize this friendship. But you work cool with everybody. Um, yeah. And I I love all of the girls on Summer House. I really had a, a really good time filming with them. I still talk to all of them. Um, I have dinner with Gabby next week. I have a girls night with Gabby, Lindsay, and Danielle next week. That's cute. We keep up. What where... happened? There was a moment with Maya. There was. There was mm -hmm. that I felt for you because I could be that way sometimes too, mm -hmm. where she takes you in the closet to remind people and she kind of tells you like, you talk too much, too loud, too like, too, you're too much. Yeah. Basically. And you, it didn't create beef because I think there was more going on. Yeah. But you were upset. And I remember it being like a point, like an insecure point for you or something. It was a trigger. Yeah. I, I, um, I had a relationship in pretty much for my the duration of my college experience for almost four years with a guy who really just stamped down my whole personality mm. was just like almost embarrassed of me but wouldn't let me go super toxic like always coming back and apologizing really unhealthy situation and I think I thought I had really like healed from that and I was good and it was over. But that is the biggest trigger for me is when someone's like, can you quiet down or can you stop? Or like, you're so dramatic or like your weight, you're just too much. Like, yeah. can you just be chill tonight? Something like that. It just is one of those things that just transports me immediately. Yeah. Um, so I had an emotional reaction to that, but it wasn't a reaction to Maya. It mm -hmm. was a reaction to like my trauma, if you will. Like but why PTSD. did she say that to you? Because I talk too much. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, it was too much that yeah, night? Yeah, it's always too much. But like I'm self, I try to be self-aware of it. Do you like, ever, I have moments where like, let's say I have a dinner or something and I'm like, today I'm just going to be quiet. Listen, I'm going to listen. I'm just going to like be on the side. I don't have energy today to like steal the show. Right. And then like, it's almost like in a movie where you do a flash forward and I'm like, but I'm bum, <laughs> yes. and just screaming. You're doing a can-can on the table. <laughs> like, And I'm like, oh, I really was planning on sitting this one out. Yeah. Um, but it's it's funny. I went to college at Ithaca College and everyone was like smoking weed and super gel. And like yeah. every guy that I was kind of interested in. For you, I, I know. Like. I, I chose it by, do you remember College Board where you could totally. see like the school stats? Yes. I wanted to go to like a pot smoking liberal arts like school. Why? I saw myself as not fratty. Got it. Got it? So Got that it. was opposite for me. Right. So get there. Everyone thinks they're John Mayer like playing totally. guitar. And like those guys artists. weren't into me at all because like, I was not the John May. You know what I mean? Right. Like, they were like wanting to sing the songs. Have you're not the girl like a cigarette. Well, show. no. Well, she you're was a cigarette. You're a cigarette girl. You're not a pot girl. Um, I wasn't like, play me like a fish song. You know, I was like, yeah, what is that stupid so guitar? It's so dumb. Like, why are you playing it? And I didn't understand why they weren't into me. <laughs> okay. Um, do you get the ick when men like sing to you or like play an well, instrument for you? I remember those guys, like the girls were like, play that to me at my funeral, like, when I die. Yeah, like... And I was like, no what? wonder they're not into me because I'm, like, vomiting. You're like, because this is <laughs> so embarrassing for both of us right like, now. You don't have a good voice. It's not happening for you. Put the guitar down. Um, yeah. Also, when you came into Summer House, Lindsay and Carl were happening. Totally. Yeah. Very Did much Did you... So. Were, 
What was your first impression of them as a couple? They seemed great to me. Yeah. <laughs> they seemed so in love and so honeymoon. And I think looking back on that, it's because it was a fast moving relationship. So they were still in the honeymoon phase. Right. right. Like you're looking at it and they're like calling each other babe and they're like snuggling and they're holding hands and they're so in love. And um, and I think the love was totally real, but I also think it, you know, you just get like caught up in it. You want it to work. Yeah. Right. I think everyone feels that way when they're in a honeymoon phase or a really happy relationship. Like you want for it to work. So you you will either not see signs or the communication about the issues is maybe not as much there because you're so focused on the good stuff and you yeah. want to be good stuff. So when I was there that summer, they were so great. I was so happy for them. Yeah, you were like a stan. Like yeah. you were like a supporter. Um, I love love. Yeah. I'm like so, I love for people to be in love and I yeah. love to be in love. And when, and that summer, Corey was full-time too? Part-time. He was part-time. He came in halfway. He came in halfway. And you guys clicked right away? Yeah, the chemistry was insane. The chemistry was insane. I almost exclusively enter relationships with people with whom I have mind-blowing chemistry. Yeah. Like an instantaneous physiological reaction. Yeah. Like butterflies, sweaty palms, like heart racing. I've, I'm starting to learn as an adult that that might not be the thing to look for. Yeah. So, but that was that. Yes. And so do you think you fell in love? Yes. Yeah. Not necessarily right then. Yeah. But yes. So that started. I remember you guys left being like, we'll see. Like, we'll yes. definitely hang out. Like, it was like, we'll we definitely. Were long he was, he lived in South Carolina at the time. Yeah. And now lives in North Carolina. And I was like, I mean, look at me. I'm not. You're not. I'm not going there. You're not going there. <laughs> I'll go visit. So how did it work? Was it coming and going a lot? It, yeah. And it really never was an issue. Like I have been in a long distance relationship before and I really think it's about the compatibility of the people more than it is about the distance itself. Yeah. Like I saw Corey and I would say in the beginning before we were like official once a month for the whole weekend. And then after I would say like two weekends a month we were spending together. And he you would didn't have the talk. Him. All this time, so you couldn't know for sure if you're exclusive? Like, you didn't know for sure this whole time and you were fine with it? I don't know that I would say I was fine with it. Yeah. I think I was trying Did you want to wanna be fine assume with it? that because he likes you and you felt like he likes you that he wasn't doing anything? Um, That is what I did. I don't know, looking back, that I'd be like, I felt like I could do that. I guess I trusted that he was going to match my energy because he was matching my energy. When we would spend time together, it was very, it felt great and perfect. And like, why would you go home and see someone else? Like that right. would be insane. I'm not seeing you weren't else. You weren't doing that. No. Yeah. And probably my, one of my biggest mistakes I would say in the relationship was that the whole beginning part before we were official, like literally from the first time we slept together, I didn't ever like go on another date, kiss anyone else, like hook up with anyone else. I was, I would just felt like, we are several weeks, if not months at this point in. I think it would be weird if we were seeing other people. Like you thought it was an unspoken thing. Yeah. And, and I'm learning you can't have unspoken But things. it's also because like, do you have that thing where girls are afraid to be the like uncool girl and ask totally. the question? Well, it goes back to the too much thing is like, I have always been the question asker, the conversation started, the communicator, an over communicator. Because I'm so afraid of being either misunderstood or unheard. So or, here you just did the opposite. So yeah, well, with a lot of guys in in my past, I've basically since that PTSD, like three and a half year relationship where I was like too much for this guy and it was always like a battle, um, I adopted the complete opposite approach. I am the chill girl. I am embodying the chill girl. I will not start the conversation. Like I'm going to let him take the lead. And I think by doing that, I tricked myself into thinking he was matching my energy. Yeah. Um, and it's not its not like he cheated. Like, he just was, we were not in a relationship. Wait, so, so let's talk about Winterhouse. Winterhouse comes up, the offers get in. How shocked are you that you're not getting this call? I was pretty surprised. Yeah. Um, I, I was surprised too. Like, I why think, not? Yeah, I mean, I, I think... I was kind of, exp I mean, they. I was one of the first people they reached out to to consider. Yeah. And then I kind of just never heard back ever again. Um, 
And what do you think? Do you have any guesses like why? Yes. Um, I was in a relationship essentially, like I was with Corey and that show is largely about single people. Right. There was a little bit, I don't know how much I'm able to speak to casting, but there was a little bit of confusion about whether Corey would go because of the same reason. Like we were together. So they were kind of like, this is a singles house yeah. or whatever. Um, and then something shifted like on the production end at the last minute and he ended up going full time. And I wasn't invited to go part time until they were already there. Like it was already happening. I think they were watching it progress and thinking like, we need to bring Sam here. Did you think of like sticking it to the man and not going? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I My lot. ego probably would would take over at that point, you know? Yes, but I had a like an intuition, some kind of feeling in my stomach that if they were bringing me there, it wasn't for something good. And I my I couldn't just let it come and go without ever like knowing. Like you needed to know. I needed to know. Okay, so when Corey and you are both being talked to about the opportunity, he ends up going you're understanding probably. You're like, yeah, you should go. Yeah, totally. Like you weren't like... I would never, ever have asked him to say no or to not go or sit it out. Was he debating? No. He was, I'm going. Did you have any talk of like how you're going to act there? Yes. Blah, blah, blah. We had a FaceTime right before he went. It was either the night before or two nights before where the ground rule was, I basically said like, don't embarrass me. Mm. And I was like, don't... I was like, are you planning to hook up with people? I was like, just like, let's get all the information out now. Like, what are, what, let's set expectations. Yeah. And he was like, of course I'm not planning to hook up with Oh, anyone. good. And I was like, okay, great. And I was like, I, my only request then outside of that is like, don't embarrass me. Don't make me regret being the chill girl. Don't make me feel stupid. I am really happy. I think you're really happy. And he was like, of course I'm really happy. And I was like, great. Then like, go have some fun. And like, I'll see you in two weeks. And then you start seeing Dumois posts mm -hmm. that he's getting along with like Malia. And did it say anything else? It didn't say they were hooking up. It actually, yeah, it said that they were very flirty vibes. Yeah. And someone posted a picture. I still can't find the, the like post about it. But someone posted a picture of her like sitting on his lap or something like at the base of the mountain. Mm. And the the submission was like, they're being very flirty. Like, guess he's not with Sam anymore. Mm. And I was like, if other people are saying it's so clear from, first of all, so far away. Like we're talking like a 3X zoom, like through a window. Yeah. If it's so clear that like, if someone feels so clear that he's not with me anymore, yeah. that's Did a problem. Did you confront him about that post? Um, not by text while he was there. Oh. Um, because A, I didn't want to do it by text. And B, um, I mean, I know how the internet can be kind of. So it was kind of like, I'm not clear on what the situation is. And C, um, I just wasn't hearing from him a lot while he was there. And I, it's like a 24 hour filming schedule. So I was kind of right. like, I'm not going to get the conversation that I want. You want. And I also like, didn't know if I wanted that conversation to be had on camera. Like, 24-hour filming schedule means mm. if I call him and say, like, let's talk about you this. You know it's going to be filmed. It's aired. Uh-huh. So when you agreed to come, that was set up, like, he was happy you were coming. Totally. Um, Did you plan on having that conversation? Well, you didn't. No. Um, I didn't plan on having, like, any serious conversations. I had a little bit of a... I wonder if it will come to a head here mm. because being in any of those houses on any of those shows is like being in a pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. Everything that is a maybe, you get your answer in those houses. Uh huh. Um, whether, you know, wow, for better you or have work. a lot of restraint. Thanks. I'm learning. Thanks. Like how I would, I would maybe like plan <laughs> not to say anything, not to text about it, you know, but I, I don't know that I could do it. But so, like you're saying, it came to a head. You didn't have to say anything. Right. Malia tackled him. He, They were doing that thing right in front of your face. Right. The first day. Right. And the first 20 minutes. Actually. Oh, my God. It was like the first activity we did as a group. Have you ever, has he ever disrespected you like that in public before? No. How, how do you explain it then? Like, why would he do that <clears throat> in front of your face 20 minutes in, not think like this might piss her off? Corey, and like, this is not, sorry, I'm going <clears> to <throat> yeah. clear my note. Do you want a drink? Yes, that's okay. Let's try. Like the drink break. Let's have a beverage. Mm -hmm. 
Um, this is not me making an excuse. This is me sharing what he said to me. Mm-hmm. So it's not like my own original thought. Corey has a really hard time knowing when someone is flirting versus like being his friend. Um, he's he's like me, very touchy. I hug everyone. I'll hold your hand. I'll kiss your cheek. Like I, my love language is touch. Yeah. I like, obviously I'm not doing anything super inappropriate, but like I'm a huggy, lovey person. And so is he. And so um, he told me that he genuinely was like, this is extremely platonic. And I think the difference is like, he is seeing it from his lens of like, well, I don't want to hook up with her. So it's fine. Nothing's going to happen. Right. Even if she tried to make a move on him, he'd be like, well, I didn't do anything. And I never thought to do anything or intended to. So it's fine. And well, as a viewer too, like, we saw in interviews that she was wanted to hook up with him at the beginning. But mm-hmm. but I think Amanda said that in the reunion too, like being mm-hmm. there, you didn't see that. Right. Yeah. So like I I try to transport people when I talk about this back to Colorado. The show had not aired yet, y'all. So like I didn't know about anything that had happened until the moment I walked in. So my first piece of information is she's wrestling him in the snow, falling back on the, like, Dumois posts about, like, they're very flirty, she's sitting on his lap, all this. And then him being like, all the girls in the house are trying to hook up with me. I told them we were dating, but which you see this aired, this clip, where I'm, like, laying on him in his bed. And he said, I told all the girls I'm dating you, and they are coming for me anyway. So that's the information I had. And you'll notice I didn't have the opportunity to film confessionals, like green screens. So like she, eight months later, is like creating a narrative for the story where like, oh, it's platonic, all this. But like when I'm there and it's eight months ago, I didn't know she had been saying she wanted to hook up with him, saying like, who would you make out with? And it's like, Corey, this, that. So like my information when I'm there is Corey says it's platonic on his end. She is wrestling him in the snow, the Dumas post. And I'm like, it's just a yucky feeling yeah. in your stomach. And you know. And you talk to her. You guys had that conversation. Yeah. Where she's like, I wouldn't be in a situation ship for eight months. She was very. Um, How'd that feel when she said that to you? It was like crushing. Like my windpipe yeah, like, I saw. was gone. Yeah. Like, I mean, even though it's me reality. my jaw. So I'm saying even though it's reality TV and like you never know it's edited. I feel like you're right. Like that moment. Your reaction was your reaction. Yeah, you can physically watch, you can watch my body and my, you can, if you look at my eyes in that scene, you yeah. can see them change. Yeah. Like something. Because of what that felt like mean to you or that, or maybe it was also you realizing like, why am I in this situation? Jeffrey? All of those things. Right? Yeah. And it was partly like feeling stupid. It was partly another woman who I intended to be friends with walking in the house. It was another woman purposely trying to make me feel stupid. It was feeling disrespected by everyone and feeling lied to by everyone. Like I say to her in that moment, like, I didn't come here feeling away, and now I do. And you can, in that exact moment, you can see when I start to feel away. Mm. But he explained the tackling to you. It made somewhat sense to you. So what about Winter House? Because we see in the reunion, you're emotional. At the reunion, you were still together. Mm Mm-hmm. You see in the reunion that even though you're together, you guys even say, like, this took a toll. So what took a toll? What was it about Winter House that took a toll? What took a toll was watching it back and finding out I had been lied to by so many people. And, like, there are lies that are genuine, straight-up lies. Like, Malia saying, I never wanted to hook up with Corey. And her saying, right. And then there are lies, like, lies by omission, where, like, as I'm watching this show now— I had said to Corey, like, is there anything I should expect or be prepared for? And he was like, no, no, no. It's what I told you. I didn't hook up with anyone. It's fine. And then you know how the rest goes. Like, you become my girlfriend. I was like, great. Like, he didn't tell me Jordan's knocking on his door at 2 a.m. He didn't tell me Malia's saying she wants to fuck him. He didn't tell me, like, any... He didn't prepare me for anything that I was going to watch. So what was hurting me at the reunion, like, we all left that house on good terms. At the reunion, I had just come off watching the show and being like, No one was going to tell me any of this. Like, when my, me being in the house, 
with all of them, I felt like a little disrespected by the tackling and stuff. But from there, it quickly moved on to like, okay, like boyfriend, girlfriend, let's just stop the, all of it. But I hadn't, I didn't know how disrespected I was at the time. So going to the reunion, I was fresh off of seeing for the first time all of that. Like how is Jordan crying about Malia spitting in his mouth when he has a girl? Like and how is no such one saying a problem for me? Like how is no one saying, hold up, all of this is ridiculous and can't be like because when Jordan's upset about Corey, no one is saying like. How are you upset about something that can't even no happen? One. Not my friends, not Corey, no one. When you're saying my friends, you mean like Danielle, Amanda? No, yeah, no one, like, and I, I, nobody owes me anything. Like you, I'm learning now that nobody owes each other anything. Yeah. But I had been hoping that someone. You would get a heads up. Primarily Corey, but like anyone else would have either stood up for me in that moment. Like when another girl is crying because a, a third girl is flirting with my man. Yeah. When I'm over here. <laughs> On the other side of the country, like what? Twiddling my thumbs? Like yeah. I don't exist? So that, I was infuriated watching her it's cry over my man. It's, it's infuriating. infuriating. But it's also, like I'm sure Corey probably said this to you. He's like, I didn't hook up though. He was like, well, I was awake and I didn't answer that door. And but I then was like, the anger totally. is at him. Still. Well, I, he, yeah. And I think it should be mm-hmm. largely. I mean. Because he gave the impression that he gave. Completely. He mm-hmm. gave a com- in my opinion, a completely false impression of how serious we were. And even in the reunion, I sit next to him and he's he's got his hand on my knee and he said, well, we weren't official. I was going to push the boundary as far as I can. And I was like, why would you say that? Why would you think it? Why would you say it next to me? What are, what are we doing? Why do you want to push the boundary? You are, I thought we were, was I like so mistaken? Like I'm so confused. And Did I would you say, say I love you before you broke up. Were you at that point? Um, I've never said this before, but um, I had said it to him and he never said it to me. He didn't say it back when I said it. And then he never said it for the rest of the relationship. Um, and that was like really a big problem for me. I was like, I think I need to get out of here. Yeah. It's becoming clear. Yeah. Um, but I would say. At the reunion, the thing that was, like, weighing on me the heaviest was, and I don't even think they aired this, but I said it, confessionals, green screens, they happen eight months-ish, like, six to eight. Like, they start kind of, like, right away, but they go for months and months and months. So they're all filmed in New York, and when he would go to confessionals, he would leave my apartment to go there. I would drop him off, and I would pick him up. And we would, like, do whatever. It, he would be visiting me while he was filming his confessionals. And he went into his confessionals. And he was like, no guy wants to be in a relationship. Every guy's going to let it ride until, like, she forces it. But, like, I don't want to lose her. So I guess, like, I'll be in a relationship with her. Got to shit or get off the pot. And I was right. like, you left my bed, said that about me, and then came back to my bed. Like, I would never say that about someone I really cared about. Guess we're shitting. Guess we're fucking shitting. That's how you're going to talk about <laughs> Oh my me? God. I'm getting goosebumps. Guess, I remember that line. Guess like, we're, sh- so guess we're shitting. Congrats. Like you're, and like, and you're even right, in that you guys, moment. Take a moment to think about it. Like it's wild because we're watching it, but you're living a reality and then getting to see that months later. And knowing where, I was and at that he was moment. in that moment. Wow. We had been official for like months and months. Like I've spent time with his family. He spent time with my family. He's staying at my apartment. Like it was so. so he's, a fu- he's a fuck boy. It was really hurtful. Well, it's funny because I always like fought that because he doesn't hook up with a lot of people. He but he is the fuck out of. He also yeah, like excuse me. Let's take a moment, and this is me saying, not Sam, calm down. You're not Ryan Gosling slash Brad Pitt. Like, let's take a moment. Like, him staying at the room, like, everyone wants to fuck. You, 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 
Everybody said they wanted to fuck him. I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Like, oh, everyone wants yeah. my man. Yeah. They said they, they said want that. my man. Own it. That's but what it was probably is the, the confidence region. more than anything it because is like energy. Yeah. It, it, because yeah. yeah, he looks good. He has a good body. Whatever. But it's like let simmer. Let's everyone take a moment. I'm you know, not, I'm not even I'm not even out here to talk shit. I yeah. think he's great. I really like I didn't break up with him because I don't love him. I broke up with him because he doesn't love me. Mm. And that's that. Like but good for first of all, like good. Like it's the first it, time it's, I've the, and it's the hardest ever in the relationship. Yeah. When I was oh, I was so many times given the option of like save yourself or protect him, take care of him. And it was always, I, I am the person who takes care of him. I'm, no matter who him is in that moment, uh -huh. I'm my friends, my everyone. I will always take care of them first. And I stopped to think about who was taking care of me and it was nobody. And I was like, oh, I'm mistaken. How? I need to pick me. concerned was he for the relationship after it aired? Like, could you tell that he was shaking in his boots? No. He didn't. He was not He wasn't shaking. worried. It's not that I couldn't tell. He wasn't. He, <laughs> he was wasn't not. worried. Um, no. And even when I ended it, he was, he was shocked. When did you end it? Before the reunion aired. Before it aired. So before Christmas. Um, and when was the reunion shot? A couple weeks before that. Oh, a couple weeks. Like maybe two weeks before you were, that. Because you were on edge. Like you were... Yes. You can see it in my body. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I won't look at yeah. anyone. I yeah. won't talk. I won't touch. He's like touching me and I can't bring myself to like do that. So it's back. almost like. I was figuring it out. The wheels were turning exactly. while I was sitting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, that was kind of the beginning of the end. And it was, it was just like, what else have I, what have I been overlooking to make this work? And here, I'm going to be so honest right now about part of why I wanted to make it work. Of course, part of it was that I loved him. But when you date a guy like that, part of the reason you want it to work is to prove to yourself and to everyone else that you're not like all the other girls. You are not like those girls that he hooked up with and then cast aside and treated like shit. You are, you are the one he wants. That whole change for you. Her. Yes. Yeah. You want to be so good that he can't possibly deny it that no one can deny it, that you are the one that changes him. Yeah. I'm like, well, it was them, not him. It was him. And I'm just going to accept it as it is. And I think if I had done that, I, Corey and I probably wouldn't have lasted as long as we did. And I'm grateful for every memory. How I, long was it? Was it a year? Depends which one of us <laughs> asked. There would be times when I would be like, we've been together for this long and this happened and this. He'd be like, well, we weren't official. Um, oh. so like, so it's like shorter. And I was like, no, we're not, not counting eight months of our relationship yeah. because we weren't official. It's eight months of being in a relationship, yeah. whether you're my boyfriend or not. Um, so it was August, summer house, August to December, about a year and a half total, including the like not official. Okay. If you get asked for like a season with him. Uh, summer house, that? I would definitely do again. That's for me, not for him. Like, even if he's there full time, like I was there first. Care. These are my friends. Yeah. This right. is like, a, this is something that I love doing with people I love. And like, I, I think I've grieved the relationship already. You and, do? It's yeah. been a few months. Yeah. It's been like a month since we actually broke up. And before that, I was already grieving it because I was seeing what was happening, figuring it out. So his reaction to the breakup though, was just like. He was, I think floored that I was actually leaving. So I wanted to do it in person. Everyone wants to do it in person, but we're long distance. And the trigger was he texted me like five or six days before Christmas and was like, Hey, I just realized Christmas and New Year's are coming up. What are we doing? And I was like, if you wanted to spend that time with me, I think you hopefully would have texted me before then, or like we would have figured it out sooner. But, um, it was a really hard moment for me because I've always wanted to spend like spend that time that a holiday like a Christmas at my family's with a boyfriend I've never done that before um and last year I got him a Christmas present but we were like not official yet so I wasn't we hadn't talked about it I didn't know so I got him a Christmas present I was like okay like if he brings it up then I'll give him this and then if he doesn't I just won't I won't be weird about it and he like ignored it like we didn't even like I got like a Merry Christmas text he also ignored Valentine's Day a month but like he came to visit me 
But like he watched me like buy myself a necklace like while we were out shopping, like no flowers, no card, no like nothing. I should have known these things. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not, this is not a slam piece on Corey. This is like me looking back and realizing all of this. Like signs. you weren't getting what you wanted. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't, I was ignoring it. Right, you were ignoring it. So I think like when we had had those conversations before where it was like, we would talk these things through, but we, I wasn't, it wasn't even a, an option for me to leave. I wasn't even thinking like that. I was like, we're just going to talk about it, take accountability, move forward. And I, of course, was also going to take accountability for like repeatedly doing this when I was drunk. It was always, I would have one glass of wine and it would be like downhill from there. Mm -hmm. Like I knew it was going to come out. I was going to start crying. So it was ideally all those conversations were take accountability, work through it, move forward with changes. And the changes just didn't happen. Yeah. And so the last time when I called him, what happened was he was like, what are we doing for Christmas, New Year's? And I was like, well, I don't know about Christmas yet. Like, I let me talk to my parents. But my mom was saying maybe we go to our house in Florida for New Year's. Would you want to come? That was at 3 p.m. on a Friday. I was away for a girls weekend with my best friends. And he was home working on the gym, which was, um, which had just opened. And he left me on red for upwards of 48 hours. It was the longest we'd ever gone without speaking. No text, no calls, no nothing. Didn't answer the question, like nothing. And then on Sunday, like evening, I see him like a video of him like at a nightclub with all his employees for their like holiday party, whatever. And he's like taking selfie videos and stuff. And, I, and I'm with my friends and I'm like, they were, I, he, when I, when your long distance boyfriend doesn't communicate with you for 48 hours and there's like nothing like wrong, there's something wrong. Like right. that's so weird. Like yeah. why do you want to go 48 hours without talking to me at all? Yeah. Like that's so crazy. So that was my trigger. And I was like, I'm, I text, I ended up texting him again. I just double texted. I was like, it's been 48 hours and I haven't heard from you. What's going on? And he was like, hey baby, what's up? And I was like, you don't think it's weird that we haven't talked in 48 hours? What? And when I called him, it was that night. I was like, that's my trigger. I, I got to do this. And I called him and I said that to him. And he was like, um, were you testing me? Were you timing me to see like how long it would take me to text? Why didn't you text me? The phone works both ways. And that's the kind of gaslighting I don't need in my life, right? Yeah. It's like, I'm sorry, like I'm crazy for noticing how long it's been that you've reached out. And it, it, I wasn't testing you. My friends were saying, don't you dare text him again. Yeah. You just invited him to spend New Year's Eve with you and your family. And he left you on red for two days. The whole weekend, I was like, maybe I should just text. They were like, no. Why do you feel like he deserves that text? Yeah. And I was like, you're so right. So like when we get on the phone and he says that, and he's like, were you testing me? Are you timing me? Like whatever, like the phone works. You should have just called me if you wanted to talk to me. That was the first time when I was like, oh, I'm making the right decision. You like knew. That, so in and that I, moment, you ended it? Yeah. And he, the way it happened was we were talking and talking and he was like, what are you saying? Are you saying we should break up? And I was like, yeah. Silence. And like, I don't, I thought, I think he was under the impression it was going to be one of those conversations that we have where we like try to work mm. through it. And I didn't want to do it over the phone. I wanted so badly to be there and to like, and he said that too. He was like, I wish we were together. But he was like, I also understand why like this needs to happen now. And to his credit, he was really, he was largely really mature about it. He, he didn't try to change my mind. He apologized. Um, I would say the one thing that like, the only thing during the breakup that I like still kind of am like working through is he kept saying, I wish it was different. And all I can think about is like, you don't wish badly enough to treat me right. Mm. Like you can wish all you want. Or you, you don't want, wish but, like, badly enough to, yeah, to change your ways. Right. Like there, like, uh, like if you would do anything to change how it was then you can do the bare minimum. Mm. Like anything, he's like, I would do anything except that, yeah, part, exactly. basically, yeah. right? And again, I, I really think he's great. I really, I loved him for a long time. And I, there are so many things about him that I think are worth loving. And I think he gets a bad rap online. I think everyone just thinks he's like a one-dimensional fuckboy. What I have to remind myself of is that like, if the next girl comes, like, before I have, like, grieved this relationship, then he's not a different man. He's not treating her better or differently. She's just accepting She's, what I would not yeah. accept. 
And we all have that point in our lives when we are accepting what we shouldn't be accepting. Deserve, yeah. But I'm now coming out of that part of my life. And has he tried to contact? We've stayed in contact. We're on good terms. Um, I said to him on that phone call, I was like, I would love to to stay on good terms. Like, I think we make a great team in a lot of ways. Like, we're really compatible. We have we are very like we would talk about like business. We would talk about like marketing. We talk about stuff for the gym. Like, I love his brain. I think, you know, I think I love him. I'm not in love with him. Yeah, if that makes sense right now. Um, and so I was like, I would love to be friends. Like, I'm never going to root against you. I'm never, I don't want to be your enemy. And he was like, I could never be your enemy. Like, I respect you too much. Like, I, like, we don't, what I'm telling right now is my truth for the first and probably the last time. It's not, I'm not here you to talk shit. You didn't confirm it until now, the breakup. Right. It hasn't really been confirmed. You wrote something though that was really touching. Mm -hmm. So before we go, you wrote on on after the reunion to everyone who has sent me kindness, who has asked how I'm doing, sent me an encouraging message, called me to check in or held my hand. Thank you. I am soft and I refuse to be hardened. I am proud of the love I give so freely and I will never be embarrassed by that gift. I mean, I was embarrassed a little bit, but like, <laughs> like a little embarrassed. Like, You're so cute. But I like looking back on it, I I don't have a single regret. I everything winter house, everything in the relationship. I really um I mean, like song for this breakup, because everyone has a song yeah, for every breakup. Tell us. It's the Taylor Swift cover of Better Man. Um, and the line that like really hits different. I like start, I'm like yelling the song and then my voice breaks and I'm sobbing the song. Yeah. Um, is I gave to it my best and we both know you can't say that. And I, but that's how I really I feel yeah. about it. And like for myself, like I really put every single thing out there. I gave it everything and I can never regret that because I'll never look back and be like, what if I did this? Or what right. if this was different? Right. It will always be, I really gave it my all. And I also wish it could have been different, but yeah we're not the right people at the right time for each other yeah. and that's okay. And I think he's going to do great. And I think one day he will find love and I think I will too. Um, so I'm not worried about us and Sam I'm really happy we're on. Oh my God. Could you believe? Could you imagine? <laughs> I have well, to call Sam, Hannah. <laughs> I want to tell you, thank you for sharing this here. No, thank you for letting me. This felt like a really safe space I'm to like do. Glad. That's why I haven't talked about it before. It never felt like a, it was piranhas. Yeah. This feels different. I'm glad. So I'm so you. glad. Thank you. And you're a gem, thank you. honestly, and you do deserve more. Thank you. And I'm glad that you stood up for yourself and and what you and what you deserve. And you're still cool. Thank you. Know, you can Am still, still be cool. cool. Girl? I mean, yeah, you can still be a cool girl, even though kind. you know that you deserve to be, you know, treated right. So everyone listening, I'm sure so many girls can relate and are going to take so much away from this. So thank you again. Thanks for letting Yay. me. Yay.